our topic for this day is the comparison of the shear reinforcement of the reinforced concrete columns and reinforced concrete beams under ordinary, intermediate, and special moment resisting frames. But before I start, I would like to remind you about the section 208.7.2.5 of the NECP 2015, which states that the concrete frames required by the design to be part of the lateral force resisting system shall conform to the following. First, in seismic zone 4, they shall be special moment resisting frames. Second, in seismic zone 2, they shall, as a minimum, be intermediate moment resisting frames. In my case, since I belong to seismic zone 4, I will be using the special moment resisting frame for my design. So, without further delay, let us begin comparing the shear reinforcement requirements for the reinforced concrete columns and reinforce concrete beams under ordinary, intermediate, and special moment resisting frames. Let us first begin with the reinforced concrete beams under ordinary moment resisting frame. Since there are no spacing requirements stated under beams of ordinary moment resisting frames, we will be using the NSCP table 409.7.6.2.2 maximum spacing of shear reinforcement. Comparing the steel shear strength from 0.33 square root of Fc prime times the width B times the effective depth D, which states that if your Vs is less than or equal to 0.33 times square root of Fc prime times the width B times the effective depth D, maximum spacing should be the laser of D over 2 and 600. If the other way around, Maximum spacing should be the laser of D over 4 and 300. And take note that this shall be applied throughout the length of the beam. And for columns under ordinary moment resisting frames, again, since there are no spacing requirements, we will be using the NSCP table 410.7.6.5.2, which is the same table with the NSCP table 409.7.6.2.2. And this shall also be applied throughout the length of the column. Next is the intermediate moment resisting frames. For beams under intermediate moment resisting frame, section 418.6.4 states that hoops shall be provided over the length equal to twice the beam depth. And the first hoop shall be located not more than 50 mm from the face of the supporting column. And at this location, the spacing requirements is the smallest of the following. First, effective depth divided by 4. Second is 8 times the diameter of the smallest longitudinal bar enclosed. Third, 24 times the diameter of the hoop bar or stirrups. And the last one is 300 mm. And that is the spacing requirements for beams under intermediate moment resisting frames at location 2 times the height of the beam. But from that point up to the midspan, the spacing requirements shall conform again to the table 409.7.6.2.2 of the NACP 2015. Now for columns under intermediate moment resisting frames, the spacing shall not exceed the smallest of the following. First, 8 times the diameter of the smallest longitudinal bar enclosed. Second, 24 times the diameter of the hoop bar or lateral tie, third, one half of the smallest cross-sectional dimension of the column, and lastly, 300 mm. And this shall be applied at length LO, and length LO shall not be less than the largest of, first, one-sixth of the clear span of the column, second, maximum cross-sectional dimension of the column, and the third one, 450 mm and from this point up to the midspan the spacing requirements shall conform to table 410.7.6.5.2 and the last one is the special moment resisting frames again for the beams under section 418.6.4.4 states that hoops shall be provided over the length equal to twice the beam depth and the first hoop shall be located not more than 50 mm from the face of the supporting column and at this location, the spacing requirements shall be the smallest of the following. First is effective depth divided by 4. Second is 6 times the diameter of the smallest primary flexural reinforcing bars 
excluding the longitudinal skin bars. And the third one is 150 mm. And from that point up to the midspan, the spacing requirements shall conform again to the table 409.7.6.2.2. For columns under special moment resisting frames, the spacing shall not exceed the smallest of the following. First, one-fourth of the minimum column dimension. Second is six times the diameter of the smallest longitudinal bar. And the third one is E sub zero, which has a formula equals to 100 plus close and open 350 minus HX divided by 3, where HX is equal to the height of your column minus 2 times the cover minus 2 times the ties and S sub 0 shall not exceed 150 mm and need not to be taken less than 100 mm and this shall be applied at length LO and length LO shall not be less than the largest of first one sixth of the clear span of the column second is the maximum cross-sectional dimension of the column and the last one is 450 mm and from this point up to the midspan, the spacing requirements shall conform to the table 410.7.6.5.2 of the NACP 2015. But of course, all of this spacing should be compared to the spacing calculated from the actual shear force VU, which has a formula S is equals to AV, which is the area of your shear reinforcement, times FYT times the effective depth D divided by Vs S where Vs is equals to Vu divided by reduction factor phi minus Vc, where Vc is equals to 0.17 times the square root of Fc prime times the width B times the effective depth D. And that would be all for this topic, and I hope you have learned some knowledge regarding the design of reinforced concrete beam and reinforced concrete column. And please help this channel by subscribing and sharing our videos. Just comment down below if you want some in civil engineering topics you want to discuss here. Thanks. For our next videos, I will be giving samples for the design of the spacing of the shear reinforcements for beams and columns using the provisions that we have discussed.